I quit my job to start a creative business and I'm not sorry. If you're thinking about pursuing a creative career, in this video I'll tell you how I made the change and why I don't regret it. And while I do that, I'll be painting this kookaburra in watercolour. Eleven years ago, I was standing in the classroom trying to keep 27 noisy 10-year-olds focused on their work. I was struggling to remember a time when I actually enjoyed doing this. I remember feeling full of energy and enthusiasm when I first started teaching, but after a few years, the energy was replaced with a sense of fatigue and a desire for copious amounts of coffee. I followed my head when I decided to become a school teacher, and now I know that I should have followed my heart. When I finished school, there was no internet, and I had never even laid my hands on a computer. Mobile phones were not yet invented, and my dreams of pursuing a creative career seemed like a far-fetched fantasy. I was aware that making a living from my artistic talent would be a difficult task, but I was clueless about where to begin. At the young age of 17, I had no one to guide me. Over the years after I left school, I had a number of jobs, but none of them were satisfying. I worked in retail, I became a sign writer, and I worked as a visual merchandiser. When I was in my 30s, I took on a second job where I taught acrylic painting classes and workshops for adults. That was the first time I actually enjoyed working because I was doing what I love, painting. When I was in my late 30s, I decided that I was going to be a school teacher. We needed more money so that we could finish our house. I had a choice to make. I could keep doing low paid jobs or I could spend some time studying and I could pursue a career instead. I was tired of doing the same thing and getting the same results, so I spent four years at university studying. I practically lived in the university with nothing but my laptop and a stash of chocolate to keep me company. All that hard work paid off because I was awarded the university medal on graduation day. Getting the university medal was supposed to be my golden ticket to the teaching world. But it turned out to be more like a shiny participation trophy. Pretty to look at, but not much practical use. So I spent the next five years bouncing around different teaching jobs like a kangaroo on a trampoline. At first it was exciting, but then the reality set in. Teaching became my life and my personal time was just a distant memory. I spent more time planning lessons than catching up with my favourite TV shows. It was like Groundhog Day, except without the catchy soundtrack and with a lot more coffee. I was, however, able to find little pockets of time on weekends and on days where I wasn't working, and I taught myself how to paint in watercolour. I had missed the peace and calm that I felt when I painted. I quickly became addicted to this beautiful new medium. I opened an Etsy store and I began selling prints and originals. I showed some photos of my paintings to one of my work colleagues at school one day. She looked at them and she said to me, Louise, what on earth are you doing here at school when you have talent like this? She got me thinking. Why was I doing something I didn't enjoy when I clearly had an alternative road that I could explore? Then an opportunity came along. Dom was offered a promotion, but he had to move to Sydney. And Sydney's about a seven-hour drive south from where we live. I had a choice to make. I could stay home and keep teaching, or I could leave my job and go to Sydney with him. And of course, no surprises, I decided to go to Sydney with him. I gave up my job because I saw it as an opportunity to pursue my art career. I was energised when I said to him, I don't want to teach when we get to Sydney. 
I want you to give me five years of pursuing a creative career. And if I can't make some headway in those five years, I'll go back to teaching. Thankfully, he agreed. And so began my full-time work as an artist. For four years, I spent all day, every day, painting in the corner of our little Sydney apartment. I painted with the determination of never having to go back to teaching. My painting skills improved a lot during that time. I discovered Instagram and I started to post photos of my paintings. People showed interest. My small community of like-minded artists began to grow. I tried to post something new every day and it felt wonderful to have an audience for my paintings and somewhere where I could chat with other artists. I learned how to make little videos of my process and I posted those too. I made a simple website. I got an agent in the US and I started licensing some of my paintings. I even co-authored a book with other artists. Things slowly started to move ahead, and I was feeling hopeful for the future. During my second year of painting full-time, someone at Skillshare contacted me and asked me if I'd consider making some watercolour classes for their site. I thought, I can do that. I'm a teacher. I love painting in watercolour. So that set me on a journey of learning how to use Adobe Premiere to edit videos. That was a big learning experience for me. I had to film an entire painting. I had to edit all the footage, and then I had to learn how to voice it over. But I managed, and the more I did, the more I learned. I was learning not only about filming and editing, but I was learning about the process of painting in watercolor. Making the classes made me think about what I was doing and why I was doing it. It forced me to learn more about painting in watercolour. When I published my first class on Skillshare, it was reasonably popular, so I published another one and then another one. Dom and I moved back home four years after moving to Sydney. I still had one year up my sleeve to decide whether or not I would go back to being a school teacher. My Instagram following had grown beyond what I could have ever imagined for myself, but I still wasn't sure that I had done the right thing. One night, Dom said to me, you need to think of yourself as a content creator. He told me to film everything I paint and keep making videos, post them on YouTube and see what happens. I took his advice And I'm so glad I listened to him. I worked hard at building up this YouTube channel. I had to step out of my comfort zone. Dom encouraged me to appear on screen. And that wasn't easy for me. It still isn't easy for me. I don't like the sound of my voice. And I cringe when I hear it played back to me. I didn't know the first thing about building up a YouTube channel. This was all new to me. I had so much to learn. While I was making videos for YouTube, I discovered Patreon. The support that I have garnered on Patreon has allowed me to finally realise that, yes, I have done the right thing. My only regret is that I didn't start pursuing my creative career sooner. I'm not getting any younger And I feel I'm at a time in my life where I should be slowing down. And I'm actually doing the opposite. Dom has taken six months off work to help me with my business. And my son travels here from Sydney to help me film and edit. We have all realised that there is so much more to do. And we're hopeful that Dom won't have to go back to work. And instead he will continue to help me. So not only has pursuing my creative career changed my life, it's changed their lives as well. So there's my finished kookaburra painting. I have prints of this painting available on my website and every purchase helps us give back to the planet by planting a tree in Australia through our partnership with One Tree Planted. The link 
is in the description of the video. So I spent nearly 30 years working in jobs that gave me no satisfaction because I told myself that I couldn't earn enough money as an artist. When I was younger, that was probably true, but it's not now. There are so many ways to make money as an artist, but it's usually not enough to just be a good artist. You also have to know how to promote and market yourself. And you may have to do other things like teaching while you build your career. I was lucky that Don was able to support us through those five years when I was trying to establish myself. And I know not everyone has that luxury. If your heart wants to chase a creative career, I hope you have the opportunity to listen to it and make the switch. I'll see you next week. Are we ready? What? Do we need a slapper? Slapper. Mm. No. Are we ready? You're creaking. Yeah. I'm not going to have many bloopers for this one. You're going to make some. You should have pointed up and said, look, Kukuba. See that now? Just go, look, Kukuba. What? Go right here. Look, Kukuba. What do you mean? Put your hands there behind you. There's a Kukuba. Ah, oh, look. See? Kookaburra. I'm not painting that one, but painting this one. When I was younger, that was probably true, but it's not now. And <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Start again. When you were younger, not because you were young, but because the tools weren't available. While you build your career. And that I was supposed to, no, nah, that didn't work. Sorry, I've got to do that again. And you may have to do other things like teaching. I did it again. Did it again. No, I was going to say while you build your career after teaching. Do we need while you build your career? Just leave that off. Is that good? Off. Was it good? Did it do thumbnail for the kookaburra on the other side? Now? Other side.